Hello. In this video, you'll learn about importing networks in the format of text files to your InfraWizard project. Text files are usually used to import data from design spreadsheets. They can also be exported from hydraulic modeling applications. However, if you can export shapefiles from your hydraulic model, it would be a better way to import your network to InfraWizard. In general, importing text files is very similar to importing shapefiles, except that shapefiles can include multi-vertex conduits, while text files can only be used to import straight-line conduits. In our example here, I'll export text files from an Excel spreadsheet. It's a small gravity line that consists of three pipes and four manholes. The text files to be imported should include the same basic data fields that we used while preparing shapefiles in the last session. These basic fields include the name and ground levels for nodes and include the name, invert levels, material, and size fields for pipes. In case you're importing a pressure network, you don't have to include the invert levels in the data file. You can alternatively ask InfraWizard to calculate the invert levels of the pipes from the ground levels during import based on the minimum soil cover you specify. Same as in the case of shapefiles, it is highly recommended that the material names in the pipes sheet match the material names in the pipe library of the InfraWizard project. Also, the inner diameter of each pipe should match the inner diameter of the relevant size in the pipe library. In addition to these fields, we need to add some geometry fields to define the node positions and the connectivity between pipes and nodes. In the node sheet, we should have the fields for coordinates to define the node positions. In the pipes sheet, we should have fields defining the start node and end node for each pipe. In case I have box section conduits in the network, I would add another field for conduit shape and two more fields for the inner span and inner rise of the box section. I'll now save these two spreadsheets as tab delimited text files. The text files to be imported to InfraWizard can be either tab delimited or semicolon delimited text files. Now I'll go to my InfraWizard project and select Import Text Files. I'll call my new network Existing SW and define its type as Gravity Network. Then select the text files I've just prepared. It's important to choose the right delimiter here as well. Click Next. Here, I should define the settings of the import, mainly by selecting the data fields of the text files, which InfraWizard should use to import the data of my network. For the pipe name field, I'll select the field called Label. For pipe connectivity, I'll select the fields called Upstream Manhole and Downstream Manhole. For invert levels, you can notice that I have two options. One is importing the levels directly from the data files by selecting the fields of start and end invert levels. And this is the normal case in gravity networks because I already have invert levels well-defined in the data files based on the hydraulic design. The other option is to let InfraWizard calculate the pipe invert levels from the node ground levels. I'd use this option with pressure networks, because in such case, you usually don't have the pipe invert levels, but only have a single level defined at each node, which is normally the ground level. In that case, InfraWizard will calculate the invert levels from node ground levels based on the minimum soil cover I define here. I'd also select the centerline option for matching at nodes, which means that pipes of different diameters connected to the same node will have the same center level at the node. And this is the normal case in pressure networks. Now, for my network, I'll select the option Read from Fields and select the fields Upstream Invert and Downstream Invert. There's an additional option here to force matching at nodes, but this can only be used in very special cases, because if you select this option, InfraWizard will change the invert levels of the network to force matching of pipe levels at the nodes. I'll not select this option for my import. The next setting is the pipe material, 
And because we included it in the export by using the material name in the pipe library, I'll select the option Read from Field and select the field name Material. By doing this, InfraWizard will match the material name from this field with the corresponding pipe material in the pipe library of my project. If you have a simple project with one type of pipes, you can cancel the material field in the data file and select the option Use Constant during import, then assign a pipe material directly here. However, it is always preferable to include the material field in the export while using the same material names in InfraWizard's pipe library as we've just done. Then we reach the pipe size. We also have two options for importing the pipe size. The first option is to import it from a single field, which is the easy way to use in simple networks. This will be, in our case, the field called diameter, where we included the pipe inner diameters during preparation of the text file. The other option is to use a set of detailed fields to represent the pipe size. In this case, you should define individual fields for the section shape, the diameter of circular section conduits, and the span and rise for box section conduits. This option facilitates accurate import of the more complex networks that contain different types of conduit sections. One important thing to bear in mind is that the fields of diameter, span, and rise should all represent the inner dimensions of the conduit. The diameters that will be imported here will be matched with the standard values of inner diameter in the pipe library for the specified material. Same thing applies for the box section conduits. In case the imported pipe diameter is not found in the library, InfraWizard will automatically add it as a new size during import. The next part is the number of cells, which represents the number of barrels of the conduit. And since I'm importing a conventional sewage network, where all pipes have a single cell, I didn't include a field for this in the text file. All that I need to do is to select Use Constant and keep the default value of 1. But if I'm importing a network that contains conduits with multiple cells, I'd include a field for the number of cells in the data file. For the nodes, we have only three elements. The first one is the node name field. And for this, I'll select the field called Label. The second element is the node coordinates, so I'll select the fields X and Y, which represent the easting and northing fields. The last field I should specify is the ground levels field, and I have an option also to set a constant ground level if I don't have the ground levels in the text file. There is a useful option here to save the settings of import so you can reuse the same settings again in importing other data files. Now I'll click Finish and complete my import. This is my new network called Existing SW. You'll notice that InfraWizard has recognized the sizes of the imported pipes and associated them with the standard sizes in the pipe library. For example, this pipe has a nominal diameter of 630 millimeters because InfraWizard has matched the inner diameter of it with the inner diameter of the nominal size, 630 millimeters, and consequently assigned this size to the pipe. You're now familiar with all methods of importing pipe networks to InfraWizard. Starting next session, we'll be exploring different operations to analyze and edit networks in InfraWizard. Thanks for watching. See you soon.